Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Let me know if you can see me, hear me, all those good things. Let's see. Waiting for my audio check. I have some exciting news. I got a lot of new fish. So many new fish this week. So every single one of my aquariums got new fish. Yee! So for my little aquarium, I got some glow light Daniels, Celestixies Chopra. God, that's really hard to say. They used to be called Danio Chopra, and now they're not. So I don't know when that changed. But anyways, so those are very nice. They are extremely tight schooling. I did not know that. So... Anyways, those are in my small tank. And then in this tank right next to me, I got some new rainbows because you know how I love rainbows. I got Melanotania Goldie Eye Cura. Ooh, those are very pretty. And then in this tank, I got some blue neon gobies. Some of those were given to me by Mike of All Things Fish. He won them from Dan's Fish. He gave them to me and I bought some more of them too. So I have a big group. So very exciting week for me. So, uh, yes, that's good. And we have an exciting topic for today. And that topic is photosynthesis, which is a topic I'm very excited about because I'm excited about plants. Obviously, I very much enjoy growing plants. I used to have a ton of house plants, but Fat Kitty killed them all because he is a stone cold murderer. He hates plants. He does not like them. He wants them all to die. So we don't have those anymore. But uh, yes, so plants. I also like gardening. So I am very passionate about plants. I used to teach photosynthesis as one of the topics I used to teach. I'm not a plant physiologist by training, but I am one by passion. So let's get started. Let's share this screen. And no, entire screen. There we go. And sharing. Okay, so today we are talking about photosynthesis. Start the slideshow. Okay, so photosynthesis is one of the most fundamental processes of life. We would not be alive on this earth without photosynthesis. So, this is the same process whether you are a giant oak tree or you are a tiny cyanobacteria, it happens just the same. Um, there are a few variations on it. We will mostly be talking about how it happens in vascular plants because that is most of the biomass on earth are vascular plants. But just know that it is pretty much the same in algae and even in cyanobacteria with some differences. So whenever you learn about these basic sort of, uh, I'll pull out my monitor just a bit more so I can see it. Whenever you learn about basic sort of metabolic processes, it's nice to think about what the products are and what the reactants are. So the products are what you end up with at the end, and the reactants are what you start with at the beginning. So in photosynthesis, the reactants are light from the sun and oxygen and water. And the final... Um, Sorry, that's a reactant is oxygen. What am I thinking? Wrong process. Sorry. The products are the reactants are light from the sun and, and water. And your products are oxygen and carbohydrates. So the equation for that, without all of the intervening steps, you need six molecules of CO2 and six molecules of water in the presence of chlorophyll, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and sunlight. And those get turned into 
this molecule right here, which is glucose. And glucose is a building block for all kinds of carbohydrates that plants use, as well as oxygen that is given off as a waste product. Plants actually do use oxygen. They use it to respire, just like we use it to respire. But we will not be talking about respiration today. Maybe we'll talk about respiration another day. I mean, that's another really important process. But today it's photosynthesis. So this is just a summary of everything I just said. So the reactants, you have radiant energy from the sun. You could also use this from your Fluval 3.0 plant light. That works too. Carbon dioxide gas. For most plants, this is just atmospheric air, so it's not a limiting reagent. In aquatic plants or your aquariums, if you inject CO2, dissolved CO2 is a limiting reagent. And then water is absorbed by the roots. And then um, also it can be absorbed just from the air, from vapor. Um, and in our plants, in our aquariums, it can be absorbed in the leaves too, because water is everywhere. It's not limiting in an aquarium. So then the products are glucose, which is used as food for the plant and then also storage. It's also used for structural purposes and oxygen, which is the gas that's given off as a byproduct. So photosynthesis can be divided into two parts. There are the light reactions. So sometimes these are called the light reactions. Sometimes these are called the light dependent reactions. And I actually think it's a better way to describe these as the light dependent actions because you have to have light to do them. And during this stage, the um, water is lysed and then the protons and electrons from that. So the H2 part, the protons and electrons go on and get used later on. And then water or the oxygen from it is a waste product. So this is the in, in energy investment stage. And then the products, um, the other products from this, so oxygen is one product. The other product products are a couple of high energy molecules. So one of these high energy molecules is called ATP, which you've probably heard of before. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. And this is kind of like, like the currency for life. You know, this is just an easy molecule to burn for energy. Um, hydrolyzing ATP is a great way to um, invest energy in other molecular processes. And in this case, that ATP gets fed into the Calvin cycle. Why is it Calvin cycle? Because a guy named Calvin elucidated it. Um, along with another high energy molecule called NADPH. And this stands for like nicotinamide, something, 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 something. I can't remember. It's like nicotinamide, phosphate, something. Anyways, this is a high energy molecule. This is a high energy carrier. And that shuttles energy into the Calvin cycle also. And then the Calvin cycle it uses CO2 from the atmosphere and the ultimate product of it are sugar. And then it recycles back these high energy carriers so they can get remade again. So the ADP is hydrolyzed into ADP and inorganic phosphate. And this can get turned back into ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate and NAD plus can go back into the light reactions that get paid, made back into NADPH. But the ultimate outputs of this are sugar. It's the Calvin cycle. So in the Calvin cycle, a bad way to call them are the dark reactions. You will see that sometimes, but I don't really like that name. I think a better way to call them are the light independent reactions. Because the truth is, is that the plants don't wait till dark to do this. They're doing it when it's light on. It just doesn't require light to do this step. So They've actually, and how they've figured out, this is light independent. So these original um, experiments were done with extracts from algae. So um, I think chlorella algae, actually. And they would feed them CO2, um, these extracts, CO2 and ATP and NADPH. And they would put them in the dark and they would still make sugar. And so that's how they know they don't require any um, 
any light to do that. So you have the light dependent reactions here and you have the light independent reactions. The light reactions require water and light. The product at the end of it is oxygen. That's just a waste product. And the Calvin cycle, it requires CO2 and some inputs from the light reactions. And the ultimate product of it is sugar. And then it sends these carriers back. So that is photosynthesis in a nutshell. And if you never understand it better than that, well, you pretty much already understood it more than most people ever will. And, and that's fine. Like that's actually a pretty good understanding of it. But we can go a little bit deeper and go into some of these reactions in detail. So what I want to talk to you now is about how photosynthetic pigments work. So in any pigment, you see them because of light reflected back to your eye. And so light from the sun is white and it has all colors in it, as you probably already know. And so this white light's coming in from the sun or a light bulb or whatever. And the color that's reflected back is the color that you see and every other color is absorbed by it. So if you have something that's black, it's black because it's not reflecting any colored light back to you. It's absorbing everything. And this green leaf in this case, um, it's absorbing all of the other colors and it's reflecting the green light back. And that's because the primary pigment for photosynthesis is called chlorophyll, which you've probably heard of before. Chlorophyll is very green. It's what makes plants green. And that's because chlorophor chloroform, chlorophyll uses other colors of the light spectrum, but it doesn't use green very well at all. It reflects it back. So this is actually an action spectra for how photosynthesis works. So in, come back, in vascular plants, there are two forms of chlorophyll. There's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And on the left axis, there's absorbance, which is uh, how much is of uh, that light is absorbed. And on the, or I'm sorry, that's the Y axis. And on the X axis, there's the nanometers of light. So you have blue light on the left and then red light on the right. Blue light is higher energy because it's a lower wavelength. And red light is higher, is lower energy because it's um, a longer wavelength. That's how, that's how um, radiation works. So you can see that chlorophyll B has a spike kind of in like this blue green area. Chlorophyll A has a spike here in this really, really blue. And then they also work pretty well in like the red areas of the spectrum. And that's because chlorophyll works best with blue and red light. Those are the, the colors that it works, uh, that photosynthesize the best. Um, and then the part that's not working very well, it's not absorbing right here. And this is the green light part of the spectra. So this is reflected back. Now, plants do have strategies to pick up some of that stray light that they're not absorbing very well. And that's with what are called accessory pigments. So the primary accessory pigments that are used in vascular plants are beta carotene or carotenoids. And so that's the molecule that makes carrots orange. So you've all seen that before. Um, and also not shown in this are xanthophils. Xanthophils are yellow. So anytime you see a vegetable that's yellow, so like squash or um, I don't know, name a yellow plant. It's yellow because of xanthophils. And so that fills in some of these holes in here. So plants can actually use quite a bit of the light that's coming to them. So those are accessory pigments. Um, and then algae. So just to show you some, you know, not all vascular, vascular plants have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, but algae use um, slightly different photosynthetic pigments. Um, so green algae, it actually uses just chlorophyll B, doesn't have chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A seems to be something that is only found in vascular plants, I believed. And then there are different algaes here too. One of them I want to draw to your attention, blue-green algae. It uses um, a pigment called 
phycoerythrin or and phycocyanin, which is why it has the kind of a bluish color. Um, those are bluish colored pigments. Um, and there's even a chlorophyll C1 and chlorophyll C2. So there's a lot of different pigments that are photosynthetic pigments that are used. But a lot of algae and a lot of the algae we would see in our tanks use chlorophyll B because a lot of those are green algae. So, um, and vascular plants use chlorophyll B too. So this is an action spectra of some of these. And you can see those blue green algae, they're absorbing best right here in this kind of greenish part of the spectra actually. So um, they're, they're a little bit different than vascular plants and what they absorb, but they still work the same. They just absorb different pigments, or I mean different uh, wavelengths of light. So. All right, so photosynthesis is done in an organelle of the cell called a chloroplast, which you've probably heard of before. This is actually um, a picture of a plant cell. I think this is actually a moss. And all of these little green balls in here, these are all chloroplasts. So if you look at a leaf under the microscope, it's almost all chloroplasts because uh, the business of a leaf is doing photosynthesis. That is its primary job. So if you look at a root under the microscope, you're not going to see any chloroplasts at all. So, and this is a cross section of a chloroplast right here, and it has some pretty interesting structures to it. So first of all, it's got a double membrane, which is uh, sort of interesting in an organelle. There's only one other organelle really that has a double membrane, and that is a mitochondria. And there's a very interesting reason for that. I'll tell you in a second. But there's also these stacks of membranes in them. These are called thylakoid membranes. A big stack of them is called a granum. So I always think of these as like little flattened pancakes. And this is a very important structure um, for photosynthesis. The membrane right here, these thylakoid membranes, this is where, where um, the light reactions happen, the light dependent reactions. And then there's a soup in here called the stroma. And the stroma is where the Calvin cycle happens or the light independent reactions. So they happen at different places in the chloroplast. Now, if you notice, there's a couple other things on here that are maybe a little interesting. So if you notice, there's DNA in here too. And that DNA, well, it's shaped like a circle. And if you know anything about DNA, and you know anything about DNA and bacteria, you know that bacteria also has DNA in little circles. They're called plasmids which is very different than we have how we have our, you know, our nuclear DNA, most of our DNA in our cells. Most of that DNA is in long chromosomes, which are linear. They're not circles. So it's very interesting that it has this. And this double membrane here is another clue. And that's because the chloroplast originally was a photosynthetic bacteria that got engulfed by um, a, a cell. So it was actually an archaeobacteria and it took it hostage and um, it's, it's called, and um, that became an organelle. So it made it its slave. And that's the origin for all, all uh, eukaryotic photosynthetic organisms on earth are from that one um, entrapment of a, of, of a photosynthetic bacteria. So like a cyanobacteria that's called the um, endosymbiosis hypothesis, which has very excellent evidence supporting it. And maybe we'll talk about it one of these days, but that's a major transition in, in evolution is the endosymbiosis. The other thing that was enslaved was, um, a bacteria was enslaved, a proteobacteria was enslaved by a cell, which was actually an archaeobacteria, to make a mitochondria. So it took it hostage. So pretty cool. Those are major, major events in evolution that happen. So if you were to look at how um, photosynthesis happens in a cyanobacteria, it doesn't have chloroplasts. This is pretty much the whole cell right here. Is going to look like this. It would have stacks of thylakoids in it. And this, it would have the Calvin cycle just happening in the goo outside of it. 
So that's what a cyanobacteria would look like. But pretty much everything else, it's going to have these little green balls in them that look like chloroplasts. So your green algae, your vascular plants, ferns, we'll all do that. All right, so we're not going to go into this in too much detail because this is very scary looking. There's a lot of information here. And when I actually, you know, when I took biochemistry back in the Stone Age, like I had to memorize all of this. And even when I teach it, I do, I do kind of make them memorize some of it, you know, because like it's their job. But just to give you a basic overview of it, the light reactions... You have these little antennae structures called um, photosystems. And the photosystems have a reaction center, which is a molecule of chlorophyll. And all around it, kind of like a satellite dish, are um, other chlorophyll molecules and also those accessory pigments that I told you to. And so what those that dish does is, you know, it's kind of like a satellite dish, right? Like it gathers up all the signal and it sends it to the antenna. And the antenna is the electron acceptor, which is a chlorophyll reaction center. And this gets excited. And in its excited state, one electron in the chlorophyll, just one electron gets excited and it sends it to an electron acceptor. So that's kind of the magic that's happening in those. And we have two photos, come back. Two photosystems in the light reactions. There's photosystem one and photosystem two. And they're actually happening. Things are happening simultaneously with them. And we won't go into too much detail about how they work because it's not important. But there's one other important thing that's happening here. So you have something called the oxygen evolving complex, which are a bunch of enzymes. And what they're doing is they are lysing water. So they're splitting water. So they take water and they split it into molecular oxygen, which just bubbles away. And then hydrogen is an atom that consists of one proton and one electron. Okay. And in this, the electrons are going to do something and the protons are going to do something, okay? So the electrons, what they're doing is when a photon of light strikes the photos, this photosystem on either side, either photosystem one or photosystem two, it doesn't matter, those electrons get excited to another state. And so energy is invested in that process. And when something is in an excited state, as it falls back down, the cell can recover that energy. And so how it does that is it shuttles that excited electron to a series of different enzyme complexes. And those are called the electron transport chain, which is super cool. And this the electron transport chain, there's one that kind of runs in reverse, actually, that's important part of respiration that we use. So, but these are just shuttles and it will, it'll, um, there's a different, they're called redox potentials, shuttling that excited electron from one step to the next. And when you do it in this control manner, it allows you to harvest that energy and invest it in a high energy molecule. Whereas if it just let it fall back down, what happened is that light would radiate at a lower wavelength. So if you've ever seen something fluoresce, for instance, um, you can energize something with one wavelength of light and it'll emit a lower wavelength of light, a lower energy. That's what fluorescence is. But in this case, we're not wasting that energy. We're harvesting it and we're doing it with this electron transport chain. And so how it's doing that is, okay, it's falling down this gradient right here with those electrons are, but those protons are doing something too. And what they're doing is remember how this is happening in a membrane. Okay. So there, this is happening in that thylakoid membrane, right? That little stack of pancakes right here. And because you have a membrane, you have the ability to set up a gradient, which is where you have something that's higher concentration on one side and lower concentration on the other. And so having this energy right here allows you to make a gradient. And the gradient you're making is called a proton gradient. So 
whenever you have more of something on one side and less of something on the other side, okay, you have an imbalance and everything sort of tends toward equilibrium, right? So things can fall through that membrane by passive force because things tend to equal out and you can harvest that energy. And you do that with a molecule called ATP synthase and you make some ATP. And ATP is a high energy molecule that you can save to use for later. And you can do the same thing, an electron transport chain right here, and you can make another high energy molecule called NADPH. And this is all done with that, like it's called proton motive force, which I love that name, but it's that electron transport chain. It made that gradient and that gradient allows you to make that. And these are high energy molecules that we're going to use for later. We're going to use those in the Calvin reactions. So I just want to show you what that ATP synthase is. Just one second. Let's see. So, because it's really cool. So these are used in... Uh, so these are used in... Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes, you can. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Okay, so this is a little video what I'm talking about. I don't know if I can make it bigger though, because it's a GIF. Well, I'll just play it anyways. <laughs> Hang on one sec. My monitor isn't pulled out very far. All right. Oh, it won't play. How sad. Well, I'm sorry to show you this, guys, but because, like, the ATP synthase is a really cool molecule. So this protein, this is the thing that makes ATP, and it's embedded in the membranes. And on one side, you have, like, all of these protons building up. And they want to fall to the other side. It costs no energy to let them fall to the other side because things tend toward equilibrium. And as it falls through, it turns this little mill. And as that mill turns, it makes ATP, which is it's just very cool looking. I mean, I think that won a Nobel Prize, figuring out that structure. And that's how we make our ATP, too, because we make ATP also. So, uh, yeah. Sorry that doesn't play, but like Chrome is not responding. Oh, so sad. Oh my goodness, that was scary. Oh, yeah, Chrome crashed on me. So let me know if uh, audio is good. Oh, that'll teach me for showing you a video of ATP synthase. I'm sorry. ATP synthase is super cool, though. You'll just have to, you'll just have to trust me on that. So anyways, where was I? We went through the light reactions. Okay, so we're done with the light reactions. What have we made? Well, we made some oxygen. That's just a waste product that's bubbling away. The other things we made from it, we made some ATP and we made some NADPH. All those are, those are high energy carrier molecules. And they're allowing us to carry in that into the Calvin cycle where we will 
fix carbon. The point of the Calvin cycle is to fix carbon. So using carbon dioxide. So how we're doing that is you need six molecules of CO2. And all of this gets catalyzed by just a super magical enzyme called Rubisco. And this is the most important enzyme on earth. Like there is no enzyme more important because it is the thing, it is the most important part of photosynthesis. And it's actually the most abundant enzyme on earth is Rubisco. And it sucks. It's not very, it's not a very robust enzyme. It doesn't work very well. You can almost write out the reactions of photosynthesis as fast as it works. It its turnover rate is so low compared to other things, but it gets the job done. And, uh, you know, maybe sometime I'll tell you about the ways that it sucks. But Rubisco stands for RUBP bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Doesn't matter. Just call it Rubisco. And what Rubisco does is it takes CO2, six molecules of it, and in, it invests it in a three carbon intermediate. And as this cycle turns, it regenerates a carbon fragment, but it makes two molecules of something called glyceralohyde 3-phosphate. doesn't matter, but the ultimately what that makes is glucose. So the Calvin cycle, it uses the energy from the light reactions, those high energy molecules. See, it's using some ATP right here. It's using some NADPH and it's making glucose. And what do you do with glucose? Well, you can do lots of things with glucose, right? So, I mean, here we have the source here. We took some CO2 and we did some photosynthesis and we made glucose. Well, you can make that glucose into another sugar called sucrose. And if you have sucrose, you can send it to the roots and you can store it for later. So for instance, like a beet tastes really sweet because it's got lots of sugar stored in it. Okay. Um, you can also use it um, to store it in stem tissue. So like um, uh, an example of that would be like um, a sweet potato. So a sweet potato is actually kind of a modified stem called a tuber. And it's got lots of sugar in it too. Sweet potatoes taste really sweet because they have lots of sugar stored in them. You can also send it to leaves. You can use it for growth. So it can just burn that sugar up, just like we burn sugar up um, for growing. And it can store it also in the form of starch. So if you take your sugars, so glucose, and you make it into long, long, long chains, um, you can make something called starch and you can accumulate that for later to use also. So plants also do that. So really this is kind of um, forms the backbone of a plant. Plants, most of a plant is carbon. It's CO2, uh, carbon-based molecules, so starches and, and things like that. Plants need very little of anything else because they can make almost everything. And um, we cannot fix our own carbon. We have to get our carbon by eating plants or eating things that have eaten plants. This is really the, the foundation of the food chain because we, you know, we can't breathe in carbon dioxide and, and make molecules out of it. We have to use the glucose that plants have, that they have, uh, that they have made. So... That's photosynthesis, guys, and uh, we'll go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah, so sorry that my talk cut out, but uh, yeah. So there's other variations of photosynthesis happen, happening. There's something called photorespiration, which we could talk about sometime. That's where photosynthesis has gone wrong. And there are plants that use other strategies to get around that. There's something called C4 photosynthesis. That's what corn uses and other grasses. Um, there's something called crassulation acid metabolism. That's what like, uh, oh, like uh, succulents use in jade plants. Um, and that's to get around 
photosynthetic pro problems because Rubisco is a really crappy enzyme. So yeah, but photosynthesis is largely the same in other, in uh, all plants on earth. So, all right, Coro, let's see what you have to say. So I know you won't see this for a long time. Not so long, only a half hour. But I finally got those shampoo, bar, or not even a half, yeah, half hour. But I finally got those bar shampoo and conditioners you recommended from Royalty Soaps, and they were great so far. Thank you. I'm so glad you like them. I really like those too, and they last a long time. So they're actually a really good value. Um, da -dum, da -dum. Saying hi to everyone. Surf City Cichlids, I think. I think this might be the first time in my stream. Welcome. Corework says the light that comes from the sun is like Gandalf after he kicked the Balrog's butt. That's because they didn't, he became Gandalf the White, all colors, right? I don't know. I've never seen Billy Madison. Should I see it? Like, am I missing out on something? Let me know in the chat. I mean, I like stupid movies. I'm a fan. I'm not above a stupid movie. Oh, Dee Dee can't make it because she's got to help her kiddo with homework. You're a good one, Dee Dee. You keep at it. The replay is there for you. So hashtag Blarney, because I totally forgot, Foxanne had to remind me of this, that uh, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. I forgot. Because it's never been a big holiday in my life because I'm only marginally Irish. I mean, I'm a little Irish. And most white people in the United States are. Um, but I don't drink. So, but Foxian did remind me I could cook some cabbage. And, I mean, I, I do like cabbage. All right, Geek Boy says, what about vegetables that are not yellow? <laughs> like Matt, for example. <laughs> Uh, what kind of vegetable would Matt be if Matt were a vegetable? I mean, I think that Matt would be a good vegetable. He would not be kale. I mean, maybe Matt would be a carrot. A carrot is a pretty good vegetable. I like carrots. I don't know. Let me know in the con, con you know, let me know in the comments what vegetable is Matt. Um, da -dum, da -dum. All right, Coral Works asks, are accessory pigments secondary metabolites, or how does that all fit together? I know reds and purples are usually referred to as secondary metabolites that require UVB and UVC to get deeper in the something else. So they're not considered secondary metabolites. They're con they would be called accessory pigments. Um, so a metabolite is a small molecule that is either a product or a reactant of a process. Um, but these these have a job to do, and their job is to, to be like the satellite dish. So they're funneling other wavelengths of light into that reaction center that chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B cannot themselves absorb. So they're picking up more stray lights, more wavelengths, just like a satellite dish. Um, those other pigments that you mentioned, reds and purples, those have nothing to do with photosynthesis. So if you see red or purple in a plant, it's anthocyanin. And those sort of function like um, natural sunscreen or floral pigments. So if you see red flowers, those are red because of anthocyanin. Those have nothing to do with photosynthesis though. Those are just a pigment that a plant makes. The exception to that are anything in the beet family is red because of betalanes. So everything in that family, the red pigment is betalanes. So that would include Swiss chard and rhubarb are in the beet family also. All right. Uh, leaf, at least that's how succulent people talk about it. Yeah. So what happens with succulents is if it's too bright out, and their leaves are getting scorched, they'll make anthocyanin and that's just a natural sunscreen, but it is not an accessory pigment. It's not doing any photosynthesis like xanthophils and um, beta and carotenoids. And carotenoids and xanthophils don't just participate in photosynthesis like a carrot, okay? It has lots of beta carotene in it. That's where the name came from. 
but it's, you know, it's, it's the root. So obviously it's not doing any photosynthesis in it. It's just the pigment that the plant is using. So they do it for other reasons too, you know, just as a pigment. So Tommy, my mom told me when you have haters, it means you made it. Craig, how is your tank doing that got peed in? Did you get that resolved? Did everything live? Did the dog survive? Oh, God. Uh, Cole works as the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I mean, it is. We can talk about that sometime, maybe. I have also taught that before. Corwick says, so a lichen or a coral has an algae entrapped inside it, which has a photosynthetic bacteria trapped inside it. It's jail cells all the way down. Yeah, you know, there's so many examples of uh, things taking other things over. So I would say that, you know, that's a, that li a lichen, so that is um, a union of a fungus and... Um, a photosynthetic algae together, working together. Um, but that's an example of symbiosis. So they are actually truly working together. They, one gets something from the other. The other relationship they could have would be commensalism, which is where one side gains, but the other, the other side really gets nothing. And then there's parasitism. So, but yeah, um, we are the product of endosymbiosis. Um, our mitochondria were enslaved. They're enslaved bacteria, which is pretty cool. Quite the slave trade. Yeah. I mean, it's, but they get something out of it too. I mean, they get to be part of a more exciting organism. You know, it's nerd time. I mean, I guess I am pretty nerdy. Stack of pancakes. Yeah, I mean, it. that does sound kind of like a rainbow fish. I mean, it does. I really love pancakes. I just thought I would throw that out there for the world. Pancakes are, they're a perfect food. I don't think I've ever met anyone who said, you know, I really just hate pancakes. They're gross. I mean, let me know in the com comments. Do you hate pancakes? They're pretty great. <laughs> That's where I killed my stream. That was no good. I know. But we're blaming, are we blaming it on moose? I don't know. Yeah, when Chrome, Nancy says, when Chrome quits, it quits. Yeah, it really does. All right. Oh, Geek Boy, put the link to that page with the animation. I don't know how you got that link, but way to go. It is really fun to watch. I mean, they have known about that structure of that ATPase probably since, like, the 80s. I mean, it just really blows my mind. It's like a little machine. You know, it has, like, a little mill that turns, and it's all that proton motive force. So, and, and we do that too, because we make ATP too. So in our cells, we do something called oxidative respiration. So we are taking in oxygen and we use glucose and we are burning that in a controlled manner, step by step to ultimately make ATP. And our product of that is CO2. So it's almost in reverse. It is in reverse, really. All right. Geek Boy says it's sugar. Got to process it and stuff it into everything we eat. I mean, sugar is delicious. You can't digest all molecules of processed sugars, though. So, for instance, a lot of those sugars in a plant come from, are made into um, fiber cellulose is the big one. So that is a carbohydrate. It's a complex carbohydrate that we do not have the enzymes to break down. And so if you eat those, they pass right through you. So, um, yeah, not all of them are bad for you. Starch is delicious because is there anything more tasty than a carb? I mean, I would like to just eat a vat of mashed potatoes personally. I think they're delicious. Bentley Pasco says it's not a tuber. <laughs> Hi, Bentley. 
hey, if you're going to the Keystone Clash, Bentley and I are going to give talks. I bet you want to see us give talks. Bentley is going to give talks on plants and rainbow fish. I mean, the best topics, right? Everybody loves plants and rainbow fish. And I'm giving talks on glowfish and uh, what else? CO2. How do you use CO2 to do photosynthesis even better? That's what I'm giving talks on. And uh, I'm also doing panel chats. I'm going to do a panel chat with Bentley and Dan of Dance Fish. We're going to talk about rainbow fish because what else would we even talk about? I mean, really. And then I'm also doing a panel chat on tub ponds with Ted Coletti and friends. I'm very excited about that because, as you know, Ted Coletti is my hero. I am a Ted Coletti fangirl. I love his book. It's so good. If you want to start a tub pond, you should buy that book. It's 20 bucks well spent. Anyways, hi, Bentley. Rico says, I put the sin in photosynthesis. I'm just saying. Just saying. Oh, I love having you here, Moose. Thank you for coming. Benjamin Peters says, somehow I feel smarter for watching you. I feel really dumb. And it's because we've had the time change this week. And I've been... I've been struggling and I wake up feeling dumb and I'm tired and most of my clients right now are in Arizona and they do not do the time change and I am struggling. I am hurting so bad and they just, I mean, academically they get it because they're nice, empathetic people, but they also don't get it and they keep booking meetings for 5 p.m. because they forget they're now three hours behind me and not two. Like, come on guys, work with me. Hi, Grip Keeper. So Geek Boy says, I got soap and shampoo from Royalty Soaps, but I have not used it yet. Got to finish what I have first. I hope you like it. I hope your wife likes it too. It's good stuff. I like that company. They are nice people in Texas making stuff and um, they last a long time. Berkeley Bell. Yeah, we're talking about Lord of the Rings. I mean, we cover everything on this stream. We do. Brooklyn, I want to hear about your mushroom kit. So Brooklyn got a really cool mushroom kit from Aquatic Moose. She's growing cordyceps, which are a very cool mushroom. I would like to grow maybe some oyster mushrooms with one of those. I, I think mushrooms are very cool. They're very cool. Mushrooms do not do photosynthesis. They have to get their glucose from plants, just like we do. They get it from decaying plants. So Silver Creek says, if you like Adam Sandler and Chris Farley, it's a must. You know, I do like Adam Sandler and Chris Farley. So maybe I should see it. I mean, I feel like I should have seen it. It's just never happened. So Idiocracy is better than Billy Madison. I do really like the movie Idiocracy. I think that is a very good movie. It is it's perhaps a favorite movie. It's, it's maybe a top 20 movie. I don't know. I don't rank things. Okay. If you don't drink, you can't be Irish. I'm not very Irish. So I don't drink. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it just comes down to like, I would rather eat than drink any day of the week, you know, and something has to give. And, uh, you know, I don't drink calories. That is my rule. I most, I'm pretty good about adhering to it. So yeah. Craig says, not the cabbage. Ha, ha, ha. Craig, not a cabbage fan, I guess. Okay. So, Rachel says, I thought Matt was a fruit. I mean, Matt thinks he's a veg. I mean, uh, Geek Boy thinks he's a vegetable. So, we have some disagreement on this. Let us know, chat, what plant are we assigning to Matt? Corn beef and cabbage is a delicious meal. And one year I made homemade corn beef. You've got to start it like a week in advance though, but it is really, really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge carnivore. Like I don't really eat meat during the week. I find meat inconvenient to cook for just myself. So I'm not a huge carnivore, but um, and I don't think Jake is super into corn beef and cabbage. So I'm not going to make that. I am going to make cabbage tomorrow just because I have a cabbage in the fridge. That's not very exciting. I'll put probably put it in an Asian dish 
which is not very Irish. So Craig says the smell of cabbage is yuck, but it's nice to eat. Yeah. I mean, you really gotta, you gotta be careful how you cook it. You can stink up your house. You can stink up your house. I have been told this about you, Brian, is that there's no need to cook cabbage. The chickens will eat it raw. I've heard that you have banned the cookery of cabbage in your home. This is this I have heard about you. Why so much hatred for cabbage? Cabbage is delicious. Come on. <laughs> that's, Jeff says that's not why the Irish fled Ireland. It was the potato famine, not the corned beef famine. Okay. Moose asks, how important is green to photosynthesis? Thinking about photosynthetic aspen tree bark. <sighs> okay, I'm not an expert on aspen trees. Do are they green? For most plants it, yeah i mean for for higher plants for for vascular plants they have to be green to be photosynthesizing those accessory pigments they only work as the dish of the satellite in that they funnel wavelengths to the reaction center now for some algae like for instance red algae and cyanobacteria they use other pigments also for green algae they use chlorophyll what was it chlorophyll b so yeah um but i don't really know anything about aspen bark we don't have aspens in uh indiana they're not a midwestern tree so yeah oh fun fact leaves are orange and yellow in the fall at least if you live in the north like i do because the chlorophyll dies off first it's senesces first and so and it takes longer for the xanthophylls and the beta carotenes to degrade. And so that's why you'll see the oranges and the yellows next. And then they all die off and they're brown. And I'm sad for about four months. Oh, Lady Rorschach. She has mystery snails. I think you have a lot of them, don't you? Didn't they breed? Whew, those mystery snails can get out of control fast. So, Surf City asks, here's the question. If a leaf reflects green light, is it really green or is it every color except for green since it's bouncing all the green light away? I mean, that is a question of semantics. We have sort of, as a species, defined colors as the color of light that reflects back to our eye. So, for instance, this can is blue because it is reflecting blue light back. That is just how we have defined it. I mean, I guess we could call it like every pigment but blue light, but that would that would be long to say. So yes. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Silver Creek says Surf City. We see in a certain spectrum of light. So it's all humans comparing the green from the chloroplast, then it's definitely green for our spectrum. Yes, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum is huge, right? And we can only see a, a small piece of it with our eyes. So if we were bees, for instance, we would get to see in the UV spectra of light, but we don't, our eyes don't work in that. Our eyes only work in a very, very na narrow part of that but there are microwaves on one end which are huge and then on the other end there's gamma rays of the em electromagnetic spectrum we can't see that all we see is visible light it's just it's all we got our eyes aren't really that good okay so crypt keeper is uh weighing in some with some very important data so pancakes are good but french toast is better how do i feel about that I think ultimately I would rather have a good pancake. I will concede, however, though, that waffles are superior to both pancakes and French toast. But it's hard to, I mean, I, I'm not going to turn down a pancake. Like a pancake is a pretty great food. <gasps> Jenna, no. No, Matt hates pancakes. Matt. Matt, is it just because you've never had a good pancake? I mean, I would argue that I've never had a bad pancake. 
I mean, even a mediocre pancake is still a pancake, right? Yeah, I mean, Geek Boy loves pancakes. He gets them every weekend. That's a weekend well spent. I mean, there is no greater pleasure in life than having someone cook pancakes for you and bringing them out to you hot and fresh one at a time. And I have not had that since since I lived at home with my dad. He would make me pancakes. Since then, I've never had a man in my life cook me pancakes. It's something I would really like, though. Just someone to cook me pancakes, you know, and just bring them out to me when they're all hot and fresh. But I'm always the one cooking the pancakes, and that's okay. But (sighs) so Bentley says Swedes are better than pancakes. I do not know what Swedes are. I thought a Swede was a rutabaga. I cannot imagine you would find a rutabaga superior to a pancake. So, Bentley, please elaborate in the comments. I would like to learn more. Brian, you're not a fan of pancakes. What good are you even? You don't like cabbage. You don't like pancakes. What good are you? I don't get this. I don't get this at all. Cora Works says, got to find the best pancake place near all the fish festivals. Yeah. Because then you can eat pancakes. Moose says, I have an excessive pancakes. If anyone wants me to send them some, I don't been actually not getting it. I don't think pancakes ship that well. I mean, really, for a pancake to be good, it needs to be fresh. Silver Creek says, It's like the alcohol clouds in space that we are shown in a spectrum of light our eyes wouldn't see it in. It's clear to us just a cluster of stars. This is very poetic, I I have to say. But through different spectra, you see the multi galaxy tall peaks from it yes our eyes are you know they are imperfect you know if we were for instance a mantis shrimp we would see so many more colors we would see so many more things this is what we're working with you know it's what we got surf city says i was playing philosophy that with the word is the ontological is I like that my stream has inspired you to philosophical heights. I appreciate that. It depends what your definition of is actually is. Oh, dear. All right. Tim asks, why do plants use photosynthesis so they can get a light snack? You're out. I'm ejecting you from the stream. Mods, kick him out. Kick him out. Bentley's got to go back to work. Take care. Bye, Bentley. Thanks for stopping in. Dad joke of the stream right here. Kyle is not even in the stream, guys. That is Kyle's job. He has, well, he has two jobs, right? One, to make the dad jokes. Two, to direct the planes. And we don't have any planes to direct right now. So really, his only job are the dad jokes. Jenna says, Ted Coletti and Sue Harkey for the top pawn talk. Yes. Isn't there someone named Peter also? There's also someone named Peter who just got thrown in. They are in a club with Ted and Sue. I don't know. I'll just be there talking pawns with Ted Coletti, my hero. Bentley says, oh, Jeff, make sure you get your shipping address. Okay. Wow. That's right. Jeff, you won those angelfish. Oh my gosh. You have to tell us what those angelfish are like. I'm very excited for you. That's so cool. Very excited for you. Oh, and you say you have them in the tank already? Throw some of the pictures of them up on the Discord because I want to see them. That's very cool. I hope you like them. I hope they came in well. I am not an angelfish person, but they are very pretty. Because I am a rainbow fish person. Nancy, that's right. End daylight savings time now. That's right. Just get rid of it. So here, here is the problem. In Indiana, we are in the wrong time zone. We should be in the central time zone. Um, so the sun is always rising way later than it should in Indiana. And now it's two hours off of solar noon. So I'm so tired. I'm so tired. It's, yeah. 
Geek Boy says he likes money. So do I. There's really no other reason I do my job. I only do it for money. That's it. I'm motivated only by money. Silver Creek agrees. Idiocracy is an amazing movie. President Camacho. Tim, you gotta see that movie. It's pretty funny. It's, I really liked it. I mean, would you like it? I don't know. I think you would, though. Moose says, same here, but I think I'm just bad at drinking. I'm not really great at it either, in that I have no alcohol tolerance. I also don't care about it. Like, I'm just not, I just don't care. I would rather eat. Like, if you gave me a piece of cake or a glass of wine, I'd be like, I don't care about the wine. I just want the cake. Geek Boy says, I feel like it, idiocracy is right around the corner for us. Yeah. <sighs> Who would have thought it was a predictive documentary? Anything Mike Judge is pretty good in my opinion. Yes, I am such a fan. I really, really love the show Silicon Valley. I have watched it now three times. And it was, oh my God, it was so funny. And I don't even really understand all of the tech stuff in it. Because I'm, you know, I don't work in that. I don't work in that field. But, oh my God, that show was so funny. So what cut should I buy for corned beef? You should buy brisket. Um, usually you can only find the flat cut. The point cut will be juicier. It's fattier. So anytime you buy brisket from like a barbecue place and they, eat, there's either fatty or lean, the fatty is the point cut and the flat cut is lean. Usually you can only find the flat cut. It takes about five days at least for it to cure. Um, you use spices, salt, like kosher salt, and um, if you want it to be pink, you need to use potassium nitrate, which is pink salt or curing salt. All you do is you mix that up, pat it on, throw it in the fridge, wait, just wait. And it makes corned beef and it's really, really good. So brisket is what you want. Okay, Crip Keeper. All right. I think Matt is a strawberry. Most think he's a fruit, but deep down he's a vegetable. So strawberries are fruits, okay? They are accessory fruits. So the true fruits on a strawberry are the little brown seed-like looking things. Those are the actual fruits. And then the red part is an accessory fruit. It's not a vegetable, though. It is actually technically a fruit. Maybe Matt is a strawberry. Strawberries are very nice. I mean, that's not the worst thing you could be. I mean, but Matt doesn't like pancakes, which really, like, I'm, I mean, it's kind of shocked me. It's kind of like, I'm a little upset. All right. Are you sure we didn't pass the corner? I don't know what we're talking about there. Silver Creek says cabbage soup is great for a cleanse, too. So I really take issue with the term cleanse because what are you cleansing? Like your body isn't dirty on the inside. Like if you want to just eat healthy food for a little bit, okay, that's good. But like you're not expelling toxins by having cabbage soup. I mean, you're intermittent fasting, which has some benefits because you're restricting your calories. But like what are these, you know, there's no toxins you're expelling. So this is a a term I take issue with. I think cabbage soup is a lovely thing to eat, though. Tim loves... I bet you make really good cabbage soup, Tim, because you are a professional cook. All right. Aspen Moose says, Aspen trees look like birch, only they grow above 3,000 feet, and their bark is white and contains that compound used to make aspirin. So that would be salicylic acid or methyl salicylate. And the bark powder makes a great sunscreen. Okay, I did not know that. Um, I, I mean, they, they do photosynthesis with their leaves, right? I don't think they're doing it with their bark. Because their bark is white. So, yeah. There's no sun. There's no photosynthesis happening with the bark. So, and uh, there's no part of Indiana that is over a thousand feet. This flat is a pancake here. Alex says, same cut of meat as corned beef will make brisket. There you go. Much more flavorful. All right. 
Moose says, I don't know too much about the science of Aspen, really. Just stuff I picked up as an outdoor guide. Okay. I'm a little behind in chat. Whatever. We'll get there, people. We'll get there. We're practically blind in comparison to the available light waves. Yeah. I mean, the, our sun, it mostly makes things in the visual spectrum. So it makes sense that way we have evolved to perceive that part of the EM spectrum. I mean, it, it does make sense. Most of the radiation coming in on Earth is are in those wavelengths. Jeff, it's once a year, let me have this. Because Jeff does not like corned beef. I mean, I, I'm okay with corned beef, I guess. I'm not excited about it. Like, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, it is on sale a lot at this time of year. So it's, you know, good to get one because it's on sale. All right. They are also neck and neck with a species of fungi as the largest living organism on Earth. Yes, I've heard they are clonal organisms, which is pretty cool. Um. I have heard about that, the quaking aspens. Not, a, you know, we don't have them in the Midwest. Jeff says, Coral, can you share with my wife and I? We'll starve before I eat it. Not, not a fan. Okay, Tim is weighing in on some very important things. So Tim says, waffles are better than pancakes, but French toast still wins. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I'm still going for a waffle. I feel like a waffle is the highest expression of breakfast carb. Unless we're talking about crispy Belgian waffles loaded with fresh fruit and whipped cream. Yes. So I don't know, Tim, if you've ever had something called a Liege waffle. They're so good. They're yeasted waffles that are loaded with butter. And they're very small when you make them on your waffle maker because they're very, very rich. And they've got some cinnamon in the batter. And you take this stuff called pearl sugar, which are these like large grains of sugar. And you sprinkle them on the outside of the waffle. And then that gets all caramelized and crispy. And it's like one of the most delicious things I've ever made. The downside is like it totally fucks up your waffle maker. It gets it so gross and nasty. And it's so hard to clean that I don't know if I can face making them again. But, oh, my God, they're so good. So if you ever go to Belgium, Liège waffles, you should get one. Okay. Wait, I thought there was something else that had crossed that largest organism threshold, Moose. There's that mushroom in southern organism and the quaking aspen in Utah, I think. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a mushroom. So there was that mushroom in Michigan for a while, but I think something passed it. Okay. They had genetically tested a grass or something recently that is all clonal. Yeah, a lot of grasses are clonal organisms because they just spread. So they're not reproducing sexually, they're just dividing by mitosis. Okay, Corwick says, sorry, pancakes are actually still in powdered form, so I'm far behind. We don't want pancake mix. We want actual pancakes, okay? We go buy pancake mix anytime. Oh, Crypt Keeper says, I'm a mod. That doesn't mean I have to see myself out. How'd you go? All right, well, oh, God. Lady Rorschach says, French toast with fresh strawberries. A strawberry sauce and whipped cream is divine. Add some pan-fried peppered bacon on the side, too. I mean, I'm not going to say no to that. That sounds amazing. I would totally eat that. I just think that waffles are a bit better. I mean, Tim is throwing down pecan simmered and real maple syrup. I mean, that does sound pretty great. But it would also be great on a waffle. Just saying. would be great on a waffle. Now we're all hungry for breakfast. I had a very lame dinner. I made some fried rice and I, I didn't have much rice to fry. And so it was like, I don't know, a half a cup of fried rice. It was very lame. I pushed some vegetables in it. It was, it was a sad, it was a dinner of sadness. Stephen likes to make fun of how sad my dinners are. I ate some very sad meals. 
Jenna, yes, Peter Nietzsche. I'm not sure how you say his last name. I mean, like the philosopher Nietzsche. But yes, he is also going to be on it. I don't know him. I also don't know Sue. I'm sure they're delightful people. They are um, also pawn people in the same club as Ted Coletti. So it'll just be a party. <sighs> Lady Rorschach had a chicken Caesar salad tonight. You guys probably all had better dinners than I had. I had a very late, I just really, I'm mean, not my lowest dinner ever. I mean, I've had some really sad dinners. I've had like yogurt and like carrots for dinner before, but I've, I've had some really sad dinners. <sighs> all right. Surf City says, Kelly, I read an article, new micro camera tech planned neuro implant for blindness. Author indicated that with them, a human may see UV and infrared. That would be cool. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. I mean, and, you know, anything we can do to help blind people, that would be cool. I'll have to read that. I'll look it up. That would be cool. They could be like Jordy LaForge, right, from Star Trek, you know, with his visor. They could see in, like, more spectra than, than human eyes could. I hope that they would also make it look like a banana clip. I think that'd be really great. <sighs> Add some pecan ice cream to that perfection. <sighs> I mean, that would be pretty great. That would be pretty great. There's some unimaginably massive fungal network that exists. And in mushrooms, mycelium is the organism. The fruiting body that we know is just the flower at the end of the life cycle. Yes, coral works. You're going to have to go back and see my talk about, didn't I talk about life cycle of mushrooms? I did because I talked about alternation of generations a few weeks back. And we talked about, uh, we talked about mushrooms. You're just now getting in on the fun we're having, Moose. Mm -hmm. Alex says, can you get curing salt at the grocery store? Potassium nitrate. <sighs> I've never seen it at the grocery store. So, like, uh, when I went to visit Jenna and Steven, they had a spice store called Red Stick Spice. Very nice. Very nice store. I think they had it there. So, like, at a specialty cooking store shop they might have it amazon has it because like amazon has everything so you could get it there too um i mean like i have potassium nitrate that i use to put on my plants in my aquariums but it's not food grade so i probably wouldn't use it all right uh clearing blockages in the digestive tract so your digestive tract is a self-cleaning organism i mean you want to eat a high fiber diet that's going to help you not be constipated which is what a blockage in your digestive tract is you don't need to go on a cleanse for that just uh eat more fiber legumes are really good um chia seeds popcorn anything high in fiber is good you um most Americans do not get enough fiber in their diet. Men need more than women. Men need 30 grams at least a day of fiber. Women need 20. We could all even get more than 20. Most of us are getting way, way less unless you are a person who like eats a lot of legumes. So uh, yeah, I mean, if blockages in your digestive tract are a problem, just add more fiber. But if blockages in your digestive tract aren't a problem, I mean, still add more fiber. It's good for you. But you don't need to like, go on a cleanse or anything. Mass eye is live as well. Man, I'm competing with mass eye. I mean, God, that's rough. Like Alex is pretty cool. I met him. He's a really nice guy. So Sarah says, if not at grocery, farm stores have it in canning supplies. Oh, there you go. Can't farm stores. So like uh Rural King or Tractor Supply? Okay. Tim orders it from Amazon. Yeah, so do I. That's where I got it from. So Sarah points out that Southern Indiana has some nice hills and caves. Yes, Southern Indiana is actually quite beautiful. It's really far from where I live, though. I'm up in Fort Wayne. It is 
It is flat, flat, flat. It is just such, it's like flat as pancake up here. I mean, I know we keep talking about pancakes, but it is flat as a pancake here. And uh, yeah, I mean, Iowa was like mountainous compared to northern Indiana. Hello, Long Family Show. Welcome. Sarah says corned beef is good. So in opposition of Jeff Kane, who does not like it. New motto, Jeff does not like corned beef. We all have our things. Crib Keeper only likes corned beef served hot, not as a deli meat. So how, where do you weigh in on pastrami? Are you also anti-pastrami? Because I don't see a lot of daylight, honestly, between corned beef and pastrami. Rubens are hot. Yeah. I'm not, like, super into Rubens. They're okay, but I don't know. They're not, like, yeah. Liege waffles are great. Use those for chicken and waffles. God, that sounds really good. You would make some woman very happy because you would cook for her. That's that's a very it's a very admirable quality. I've never had a man who cooked for me. I mean, I'm a pretty good cook. You wouldn't know it from my lame ass dinners during the week, but I am a pretty good cook. Just don't really make exciting foods for myself all the time. Dee Dee is back! Yay! Any special vendor, I think just Google pink salt or um, just look on Amazon for pink salt or potassium nitrate or curing salt and it'll come up. I don't, it doesn't matter. Okay. Kelly must have said something that triggered Alexa. Alexa. I said, Alex. Okay, this salt I use, pink curing salt, prog powder. Right, that's the other name for it, prog powder. Instacure for game, bacon, sausage, ham, blah, blah, blah. There you go. All right. Brooklyn, if I knew you love pancakes so much, I would have made you some when you came to visit. Fried in bacon fats. God, I love you Southerners so much. You just bless your beautiful Southern hearts. Fried in bacon fat. Jesus Christ. Brooklyn, I'll come back so you can make me pancakes. It was so good to see you. It was so good to see you. We were so fat after we left them. Oh, my God. We went on, like, a strict all-vegetable diet. We had to go on a cleanse for that because we just ate like pigs there. Oh, my God. It was so good. Sarah says, whipped egg whites folded into waffle batter. I agree. They do make your waffles very light and crispy. It, that, is, that is a good strategy. <sighs> Just want potassium nitrates for first. Do I have some right here? I think I do. I come with, oh, no. Where's my potassium nitrate? Here's my potassium sulfate. I think my potassium nitrate is in the cabinet where it's supposed to be. <sighs> Dee says, just to note, I love pancakes too. If I ever make it that way. Oh, I'll make you pancakes, Dee Dee. Or waffles. I would make you whatever you wanted. Nobody wants to come to northern Indiana, though. It's lame. I mean, you know, it's home. But at what cost, man? At what cost? Crip Keeper says, the secret to a great Belgian waffle, always use whipped egg whites in the batter. That's true for a regular, like, thick waffle. For these Liege waffles, they are yeasted. So you don't need the whipped egg whites in them. They are so good, guys. Oh, my God. They're so good. But they really fuck up your waffle maker. It is so hard to clean it. It's a good thing you've already <laughs> I know. We're all going to need a snack after this stream. Okay, Alec, I thought we were talking about corned beef. We really only talk about food on my streams. It's all we talk about. We started with photosynthesis, but now it's nothing but food. <laughs> Sarah says, I think we need a waffle pancake and French toast platter special. You know, that way we all get something we want, right? Why choose? 
Oh, Dee Dee would love to fry. She, Brooklyn would love to fry you pancakes and bacon fat too. Bless your beautiful Southern heart. How are you so little? <laughs> yes, the egg whites do help. But the Liege waffles are yeasted. They're so good. Mm. Sarah says she, okay, she's brought another contender. You know, player two has entered the game. German pancakes that you bake in a cast iron skillet with butter, powder, sugar, and lemon juice and blueberries. I would agree with you. I love, I call them giant puffed pancakes. I really like them. They're quite good. Sometimes they're called Dutch babies which is a weird, it's a weird name. Fishfam.link is here. Hello. I'm a big supporter of fishfam.link. Let's link that Patreon. I'm a supporter of fishfam.link because it is a website I use every day. And, you know, in life you get what you pay for. And since I like fishfam.link, I pay for it. So let's throw that link up there. All right. We already talked about that. Jenna says, I agree that Dee Dee should just come here for pancakes. If Dee Dee goes there for pancakes, I'm going to. Because I want Dee Dee and pancakes. Clashy is learning so much. It's devolved into a discussion about pancakes. We started with photosynthesis, but now it's just pancakes. Where did it all go wrong, people? Where did it all go wrong? Oh, Brooklyn says, I had sautéed dandelion greens with bacon, shallots, and garlic for supper. Wow, that sounds amazing. So we don't have any dandelion greens here yet because it is still really cold. But they are delicious in the spring. They're very tart. That sounds really good. Brooklyn, my dinner was lame. I had fried rice. It was sad. Hello, Grant. Welcome. All right, Nancy says her favorite legume is peanut butter. Does that count? I mean, I like peanut butter. I don't think it's terribly high in fiber, though, so probably not. But, like, it has other nutrients. It's got protein in it. That's good. Tastes good. You got to eat something. Like, you know, you got to eat something. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Jeff says, pastrami is the worst thing I've ever eaten. So worse than corned beef. Wow. Okay. Noted. All right, Crib Keeper says, pastrami is corned beef that is heavily peppered and then smoked. It's okay, but not my favorite. I can't decide if how my feelings about pastrami versus corned beef. I think I'm pretty agnostic toward both of them. Yeah, I don't have a super strong opinion about them. I'm not a huge carnivore, so uh, we all love sautéed springtime dandelions. That sounds delicious. That sounds very good. Okay, Alex says he's going to try to smoke a brisket, hate corned beef, beef, and can't stand the smell of cabbage. Pastrami is great. I love cabbage. I think cabbage is delicious. I'm going to make something tomorrow called, uh, so it's an Asian dish. It's a Chinese dish called lion's head meatballs. They're like large pork meatballs. They taste like the inside of like a pot sticker. And they're simmered for a long time in broth, like in the stove or um, in the oven. And then you throw some cabbage in toward the end and let that braise. And then you serve it with some like little rice noodles. And so it looks like they call it lion's head noodles because the cabbage looks like the mane around the lion's head, which whatever. But it's very good. Now I'm going to make that tomorrow. So tomorrow's dinner will be less lame. But tonight's dinner, it sucked. It's not great. Yeah. It's great while it's still hot off the smoker, but do not like it once it's chilled. Do you have a smoker? I feel like that is a very dude sort of thing to own. I don't know many women who own smokers. Like, I don't own a smoker. I don't even have a grill. I don't have a yard, really. My yard is very tiny. All right. Moose is a saute in spring dandelions and enjoys a tincture made from their roots. 
Hmm. All right. It's not the time of year to do that here. They're not ready. Okay, Tim soaks the corned beef in beer for a couple of days to draw out some of the salt before it hits the smoker. Yeah, corned beef is very salty. It's very salty. Okay, you like the big city Jewish deli pastrami that is. Yeah, and that's pretty good stuff. Okay, Sarah says, uh, Crayfish Empire LLC Spring Fest is this weekend, 11 to 2 at the Croatian Center. Well, that's exciting. So that must be in Iowa. So you've got an event you go to there. Iowa has some events. That's cool. Indiana is a little low on the events. So Lady Rorschach says, I should fresh and hot. I have a feeling I would like the flavor profile much more if it's hot. In general, I prefer hot foods to cold foods. I would just say, you know, I'm not a huge salad eater, for instance. I would rather have cooked vegetables to salads in general. Oh, Fox Hands says, we were eating breakfast for dinner while watching. Good call. Good call. Breakfast for dinner is very exciting. I love breakfast for dinner. Why not? Okay, you can't even do cold roast beef sandwiches. Have to warm them up first. Cold beef sucks. And it's kind of that warmed over flavor to them. Like, especially pork. Leftover pork, I don't think is that good. All right. So kind of like a Dutch baby. Yes, those are very delicious. You know, we're nowhere near the bottom of the, well, maybe we're near the bottom of the chat. I don't know. Who can say? Who can say at this point? Sarah says, there's many good sandwiches out there. No need for cold cuts. So in my opinion, the best sandwich is a BLT made with a perfect garden tomato. And a BLT is not about the bacon. It is about the tomato. It is a tomato sandwich that is accent that is accented with bacon. It is not a bacon sandwich. It is a tomato sandwich. And you must make it with a perfect summer tomato. And that is the perfect sandwich. Lady R says, I've always had a soft spot for chuck roast seared in the Dutch oven. Seasoned and stuffed with garlic cloves and a bit of beef broth to get those brown bits off the bottom of the pan. That sounds pretty good to me. That sounds pretty good. Tim has never had a dandelion. I mean, now's your chance. Well, not quite now's your chance. I mean, like, it's got to, like, your dandelions aren't coming out yet. Oh, Brogan just said, hey, fried rice is awesome. Why couldn't have you cooked that, Mom? I'm sorry, Brogan. But tell him that my fried rice turned out lame. He's only had like a half a cup of rice. I accidentally put too much ginger in it. It just was lame. It sucked. I didn't have time to put vegetables in it because I had to get ready for this. Like usually I would put some vegetables in it. So assure him that it was very lame fried rice. It was very substandard. Not great. Not my best work. Lady R says, great for everything from French dips, shredded beef, barbecue sandwiches, stew, and Mexican food. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Ooh, Sarah says, she just came downstairs to find two inches of icy snow outside. I had to find out what's going on at my parents' house. So they're in Waterloo, which is a, kind of far from where you live in Iowa. But it does have very shitty weather there because Iowa has the worst weather on earth. It's the worst. Lady R would also love to try dandelion greens, but she's been told they're on the bitter side. So it'd be nice to know a good way to prepare them. Get them when they're very young and tender. You want to get them in the spring. Old dandelion greens are not great. They're not great. So get them when they're young. So, Brooklyn says, Tim, you should definitely add dandelions to your diet. They're very nutritious and delicious. They are indeed both of those things. But again, get them when they're young. Old dandelion greens, not good. Not good. Move on to other greens then. Oh, sorry, Sarah. It's been raining here all day and it's supposed to start freezing shortly. Um, it's been raining here. It's, it's above freezing. We have had a lot of snow this week, but it's the kind that's like the wet, gross snow that melts so it's just been kind of low grade shitty here but not 
I mean, it's enough for me to complain about because I do enjoy complaining, but it's not that bad. So Berkeley says the entire plant is edible and medicinal flowers, greens, and roots. I consume it daily in various forms. You can make wine out of the flowers. And uh, I've had dandelion wine and it was awful. Oh my God. It's got to be possible to make better product than that. It was the most sweet, saccharine, and disgusting thing I have ever drunk. It was gross. Oh, Craig has a nice bucket of Val to plant later. Oh, exciting. Very nice. Very nice. It's been soaking overnight in fresh water. Very exciting. Good choice. Jeff says leftover bacon is awesome. So that's cured pork. I'm talking about like not cured pork. So like leftover pork roast. Ugh. Ugh. That's not that good. I mean, I would eat it because I don't want to waste things, but it's not that good. Okay, Moose is cool, Berkeley. Just starting to learn thing about things like that. I like to figure out rose hips and other things like that growing naturally. So rose hips are very easy to forage for because they're bright red. So they're easy to find. And uh, they're very nutritious. They're very high in vitamin C. They're extremely tart. So you kind of like they're good in a jelly or they're good in small quantities because they are very, very tart. Guys, I just noticed the time. Where does the time go? Uh, sorry, I didn't get to the bottom of the chat, but guys, I did my best. I did my best, but we just didn't get there. Um, Chattanooga Ed, I think is going tonight. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Mods, if you'd have a link to Ed, let's all go see him. The hashtag is always is Fat Kitty because we need to know that, you know, Ed knows that Fat Kitty is saying hi because Ed loves Fat Kitty. All right, everyone. Bye. Oh, thank you, mods. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, lurkers. Even though you're too shy to chat, maybe someday you won't be. And thank you, replay crew. Please leave a comment. I always answer every one of my comments. Thank you all so much. Bye.